my name is Megan Taylor, and so the show of hands, how many of you guys have heard of the artist Salvador Dali? And of those people, have any of you guys been to the Dali Museum in St. Petersburg? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Any of you who haven't been there, definitely go. There's an awesome garden too if you're not too much into art. But I'm going to be telling you a brief bio about Salvador Dali and the madman that he was, even outside of his crazy art. I don't know, so some of you have seen it. It's ridiculous, but his life is even ten times more ridiculous. Um, he grew up in Spain. He was born to a domineering notary father, and he was born to a really admiring Catholic mother. Um, Salvador Dali was actually born twice. Uh, the, his parents actually conceived a child before him, named it Salvador Dali, and the child got sick and died 22 months later. And then Salvador Dali was conceived. They actually took Salvador Dali as a three-year-old to his grave and told him he was a reincarnation of his brother. So imagine that as a three-year-old. So as a, his whole life he had an identity crisis. As a very young child, he was very timid and shy. Um, it took him a very long time to come out of his shell, and eventually he did. He started producing artwork. He actually produced this piece when he was six years old, and it's an impressionist piece. I mean, it's quite good for a six-year-old. Um, after, after his mom started admiring his talents, gaining more confidence in his work, she actually sent him away to art school when he was 10 years old. In art school, he was a very feisty child. He was one of his fellow <coughs> students actually said that he was caught banging his head against a marble column. And then when he asked, when asked why he was doing that, he said, you guys weren't giving me enough attention. And so his second love above art was attention. So he was like surreal art, surreal art. He actually left art school and he became part of the expression of, or excuse me, surrealist movement. And surrealism consists of art that depicts the subconscious mind and things that are meant to shock people. This is actually one of his first surrealistic pieces. And did it to depict his affair with a woman named Gala, um, or Gola, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. She was his first love, his muse, his manager, his everything. He leaned on her for pretty much everything his entire life. Um, she, there she is, she, um, she promoted his artwork. She was his number one fan. Without her, he would have been just an artist in the street. She actually would take his artworks and go through the streets of Spain trying to promote it, trying to sell it. As much, oh, there's a peacock out there. Um, excuse me. But as much credit as he got for his artwork, he didn't make any money. <coughs> so him and Gala decided to go to the United States of America, where dreams are made, right? It took him 10 years to become the number one surreal artist in, across America. They became incredibly wealthy. Um, they spent much of their time there. They had multiple million dollar investors and well, purchasers of his artwork. Um, Walt Disney even went as far as to try to get surrealism involved to the general public by having him create a cartoon. The cartoon was a little too obscene for the general public, so it didn't actually get published. That's the cartoon. Um, so after 10 years spent in America, Salvador Dali had kind of lost his lost his way, he was running out of things to paint, he wasn't entertaining as much, um, but his home was Spain, so they decided to return to hopefully inspire him to create better works. While in Spain, their, their relationship hit a slightly dry period. Um, they had been together for very long, uh, it was more of a business partnership at that point, and he um, committed his adultery and had an affair with this woman. Amanda Weir, who was a top supermodel at the time. She was hanging out with the Rolling Stones, like dating all the hottest men at the time. And um, with her, it was actually a relief to Gala because she actually preferred younger men. As Dolly was getting older, she preferred her boy toys. So she liked having Amanda Weir around. They had a kind of strange three-way relationship because she was sick of fulfilling all of Dolly's attention needs. She was tired of having to escort him to all these parties while he acted outlandish in front of all these people. So of course, hot supermodel was the perfect candidate to replace her. Not necessarily replace her, but fill those moments. Um, me. During the time he was dating Amanda Lear, it was during the 1960s, which was during the free love movement, you know, where the hippies were gathering and like, he had became a famous star at the time and he would go to these gatherings and these famous people, you know, like the Stones, um, Raquel Welsh, 
all the, here he is meeting Raquel Welch, all the hottest stars at the time would want him at the party. He wouldn't even know who these people are, and he would just go, and they would just be in awe of this Dolly was the it man at the time. <coughs> After the free love movement, he became slightly a, a bit of a sellout. He began just signing off papers. They actually found a huge bucket of just papers of his signature. He would paint, like, put no effort into his work and just try to sell it just to make a buck because he was spending money just as quickly as he was making it. As wealthy as he was, he was he was buying, he was very into extravagant clothing and an extravagant lifestyle. Um, after he became a sellout, he him and Gala, he Gala started using him as a money cow. She was expecting him more and more of him so she'd get more and more money. She no longer cared about the relationship, which was upsetting to him because he leaned on her for, he was, she was her, his everything. She had him purchase her a castle far away from him, would only allow him to come near him if she had given him a handwritten letter and allowed him near her. And that was the demise of the relationship. Towards the end of that relationship, she actually died, which was devastating for him because no, no longer was she seeing him, she also passed away. And in that time, his health also deteriorated. As soon as she passed away, she moved into this castle to try to relive the moments they had there and like see the little, <coughs> her decorations and the pieces of book that were left of her. And it was there that he actually, he wouldn't allow anyone to see him either. And he endured a fire and no one was there to help him because he wouldn't keep in contact with anyone. So he actually had 20% of his body burnt which is, this is towards the end of his life, too, and the end of his career, well, not the end of his career, his career prevails, but um, he got severely burnt, and he was alone, and he was a very vain man. He was all about his self-image, so toward the end of his life, he didn't want anyone to remember him as this aged, burnt man. So he would have guests, again, with handwritten letters, like his previous wife, and he would keep them in a separate room. He would give them a bottle of wine, entertain them, but he would not allow them to see him, because he was so vain that even in his dying days, he didn't want anyone to remember him as this old dying. And then eventually he passed away of heart failure. And he, previous to dying, he constructed this giant museum that was completely committed to him, his life and his art, which is in Spain. And that was what glorified him, which was kept his legend going. And that was the life of Samuel.